After Diana defeated the Poltergast, the balance of power shifted. Now that Raiden had lost his closest ally, Anna and Magnus gained an advantage in the war against evil. Diana's actions also left the undead leaderless. For the most part, the undead continued lurking in the dungeon, except for one skeleton named Seth. He had watched Diana's victory in the dungeon and dreamed of starting his own adventures. So Seth grabbed a sword and some tools and climbed the winding stairs to the overworld as a free skeleton. This is the story of Seth the Skeleton. Welcome back. This is Rito here with a new series. This is a spirit mod series and we are starting off at the dungeon because we're a skeleton and we've been motivated by the actions of Diana and we're going out on an adventure. This is a mod that I've never played before, but I saw the trailer for it and it looked really cool. So I decided to give it a try. We're on a medium sized world. It's crimson and we are on expert mode. And as you can see, we are a skeleton. We even got bones and we're able to put on helmets and different things. We can customize ourselves even more than just having like a skull vanity or something. We've got the brown and black dye for our vanity. And then we have the familiar wig to keep our skull showing. And then we've got the Dryad's coverings and the Fossil Greaves. And it's kind of funny that the Dryad coverings are actually looking pretty cool on them because it looks like a torn up shirt or something. And then we've got, like I said, the special mod that lets us be a skeleton. And that's called Mr. Plague Authentic Races mod. And what it does is it gives a bunch of different races to Terraria. And it also gives different stats. You can see like we've got 75 health here instead of 100. But what I want to do is actually turn this off. You can see this tells us what our racial lore is and skeletons get, you know, breathing underwater, immunity to bleeding and different things like that. But I'm not really wanting to change the game too much from what was intended during the uh, spirit mod development. So I want to keep it kind of balanced for the spirit mod. And so I'm going to turn that off. You can see we're going back to our normal health. I thought it would be cool to start at the dungeon since we're a skeleton. And we've got a little temporary spawn point tent right there. And a few of these. Oh, we've got a night owl potion already. And we got some lesser healing. That's pretty good. We need to get a weapon though soon. Uh, I wonder if we have... Oh no, we have a water bolt. <laughs> okay, well... Oh, we have two water bolts? That is so lucky. So I haven't really fully decided what I want to do for this playthrough. As far as the class, I think the main thing I want to do is play as a melee character. So I'll probably stick with that for the start. Man, if I was doing a mage, getting two water bolts right off the bat would just be insane. So yeah, we're starting a new mod and a new playthrough. This is going to be awesome. So this playthrough, I'm definitely going to be using similar mods to what I usually use because I have a bunch of quality of life stuff that I like to use. And uh, let's just cut a tree down. We need to get some wood ASAP. So some of the quality of life mods that I like are Vein Miner, Louis AFK, mainly for some of the storage and infinite torches, things like that that just make the game run a little bit smoother for me. And then we've got Max Stack Plus, which is just nice so that we don't have to have small stacks of things. Uh, I thought this was a cave, but it just goes down into the dungeon right here. Um, actually, let's go ahead and craft a workbench and let's see if we can get a proper sword here. Yeah, let's do a wooden sword. And we can... And we'll hang on to our copper short sword for now. I also have the Alchemist NPC Light, which I enjoy because it gives us the Operator NPC and some other ones that are pretty nice, like the Builder that sells blocks. I also like, of course, the Alchemist NPC that sells potions. Ooh, we're all ready to crimson. Okay, well, let's, let's cut down this tree and then let's get out of this biome. Grab that mushroom, too. Okay, yeah, we gotta run. We are not ready for that. This isn't good. Okay, it looks like he's not gonna be able to jump over that. Thank goodness. And this is probably a good spot to have a rope. I don't want to get down on this side and get stuck and die or something. Oh, and I've got weapons out mod. I forgot about that one. That's what allows us to have the sword kind of sheathed to our side. Oh my goodness. What is this? This is so cool. So this is a spirit mod build. Like it naturally spawns in the world. Cause I didn't build this and I didn't import it or anything. So this is part of the spirit mod and it looks really cool. We have this gambler NPC. It says, must be my lucky day to see a friendly face around here. 
These goblins didn't take too kindly to me offering a rigged deal. Anyways, do you like the place to stay? Let's flip for it. Sweet. So there's all sorts of cool stuff we got here. We've got different types of chests and coffers. And then we have a dartboard, which is equipable. 13% reduced damage, 15% increased critical strike chance. So we can buy something here. Um, actually, we already have a chest right here beside her, so we don't really need anything. Oh, she gives us all sorts of stuff. This is great. Old leather. We can craft all sorts of things with that. So we can do leather striders. And this is the recipe browser, by the way. It's amazing for a new playthrough because it can show all the different items you can craft with like something new like this. Oh, a cloak of healing. Whoa, dream stride essence. So many cool things. It might be pretty cool to upgrade this tower and make it our own and then kind of maybe build something off of the dungeon. I haven't decided what I want to do for the builds this playthrough yet, but I have some cool ideas of kind of a skeleton or a dungeon themed base. I'm curious what this thing is right here. Oh no. Oh no. This is not good. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> okay. This isn't too bad. By themselves aren't the worst enemy because we can block their attacks pretty easily. Oh no. <laughs> this is so scary. <laughs> and it's got the goblin song going too. Hopefully this isn't going to start a goblin invasion. That would be the worst thing. Okay. I think we're good. Unless we go back to the spawn and there's actually a goblin invasion going on. So I think I'm going to put away just a couple things here that we don't need. And we got a shadow break wand. That is so cool. We've already got two really powerful magic weapons. I might do kind of a multi-class this playthrough and switch between melee and mage or maybe melee and ranged. And just mess around with different... Uh, types of builds because with the spirit mod there's lots of new stuff so I don't want to necessarily fully limit myself to sticking with just melee class but I definitely want that to be kind of the main focus. Ooh we have a cave and by the looks of it we have an enchanted sword area. Yeah that doesn't look like it's an enchanted sword. That would have been insane. I don't even know if I'd feel good using that <laughs> just getting an enchanted sword in the first five minutes of our playthrough. Well, we definitely need to keep on moving because it is getting to be night. Oh, that's funny. It kind of deleted that tree there. And we don't want to be on the surface at night. Even though we're a skeleton, I have a feeling the zombies are not going to be our friends. And this might actually be a proper cave entrance. Really hope so. Get some tin. Why not? Do we not have any torches? Maybe I'll grab some of these torches. We're using them too quickly. Ooh, there we go. A big room. We got a wooden boomerang. We've got some recall potions, although we have already have a magic mirror, which is awesome. So up here, doesn't look like there's anything, but we can see it just turned to night, and we've already got some zombies coming after us. But I think we'll be able to kill this one. Kind of got it stun locked here. Oh no. We definitely do not have it stun locked. Oh, I forgot to put my gold into that treasure. No. <laughs> So now we gotta do some good jumping, get around these guys. Ooh, it kind of looks like we have a cave that comes under this house. So maybe let's dig down and see. Looks like we've got something down here that just has silver in it. Uh-oh, this isn't good. <laughs> we jumped into a pool in the dark. <laughs> That's always scary. No. Okay, this is horrible. We don't have enough knockback. No. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do instead is block ourselves in and we can just go digging. Oh no, we have the crimson biome over here. <laughs> Not good. For some reason, we really haven't gotten many torches from the chests. Usually chests and uh, those pots give us lots of torches, but we'll make do. So I've just been digging, picking up as much ore as we can get, because we got to get some armor quickly. So I've managed to do all of this exploring this entire night with just moving one torch from place to place. 
makes it a little bit slower, but it's still working out. So it's probably daytime by now. So let's head back to the surface. Although when we recalled, it didn't send us back to our base. It sent us back to, whoa, ice berries. Grants immunity to being on fire. That's cool. Sent us back to the center of the map. So this means we are going to have to get back to the dungeon. So let's head on over through the ice biome and see what we can find. But here we go. We got some slimes finally. This will be great. I've never been so low on gel and torches at the start of a playthrough. Ooh, here we go. Lots of pots. Yes, we got torches. And we should be able to craft a furnace. Just need three torches for that. There we go. And now we can smelt a whole bunch of stuff. We have so much tin. 76 tin. And we've got 20 iron. Lots of silver. So let's go ahead and do an iron anvil. And now let's see what we can craft. Ooh, we can do stone armor. Okay, we gotta do that. Stone helmet, stone plate, and stone greaves. Increases melee damage by one, decreases movement speed by 5%, reduces damage taken by 3%. And our defense went from zero to eight. And hold down while falling to fall much faster. Whoa, that's awesome. It's like having a slime mount. Oh, and we have frigid fragments. Frigid fragments craft into some pretty cool stuff. Like we can do frigid plate. Yeah, we gotta go collect some of those. And we could do like a silver broadsword maybe. Yeah, let's do that. And, oh, it's annoying. Still better than our wooden sword. So we'll toss our wooden sword. And then we could do a silver pickaxe just to speed up our mining a bit more. And maybe let's just do one more silver broadsword and see if we can get a better roll. Okay, that's that's much better. And here's what our stone armor looks like. Pretty sweet. And we're back off on our adventure. We're going to have to cross through the crimson biome. Not looking forward to that. We have a huge lake over here. Okay, we're definitely going to need some more of these platforms. I'm loving this overworld. Very dynamic. Ooh, more torches. 16 torches, yes! Plus we've got, ooh, another nine. There's all the torches we've been missing this whole playthrough. Well, I'm hearing the crimson enemies, but oh no, I thought we could get over it. Actually, if we die, we might spawn over by the other side. So might not be that bad if we die over here. Whoa, that's a lot of vile mushrooms. Sometimes those are pretty hard to find. Okay, well, let's just grab as much stuff as we can and try to get through here. At least we're mapping it out. And we're 25 seconds from a heal. <laughs> and we just jump on top of that monster. And like I thought, we actually spawned back at base. Do we have a windy day going on here? Some 1.4 stuff. <laughs> nice. It's like a different song though. This is cool. It's like a very peaceful, unassuming song for the nighttime here. Okay, I think it's time for us to take on some zombies. We should be able to defeat them. Maybe we can get, ooh, a shackle. Our first item. Gives us one defense, plus 20 mana. It's like a special ocean song for this mod. <laughs> this is a crazy spawn for the ocean. I assume this is the ocean up here. Sometimes it does this. And might as well pick up some of these starfish and shells because sometimes these will actually craft into things. Yeah, like look at that. Increases breathe time underwater. That's really cool. And that's all stuff we can get. We just need coral and some shells. I'm enjoying the recipes I've seen so far from this mod. In fact, we could probably chop down some of these trees. You never know if different types of wood will give us different items as well. Whoa. Crazy coconut slime. That's super rewarding. I did not expect to find an enemy and a new item just from chopping down a tree. It makes me want to go chop all the different biome trees down. Well, we'll have to come back during the day because the ocean is way too dark and we don't have any glow sticks. 
Oh, that's how you get old leather. You get it from zombies. Excellent. I really like that they added some useful things from the enemies at night. I wonder if the demon eyes drop anything. Ooh, we have a fleeting shackle. Two shackles from three zombies this playthrough. Pretty awesome. Uh, this one's movement speed. We'll do that instead. It'll help kind of negate the movement speed debuff we have for this armor set. And there we go. We still have our gold from earlier in the playthrough. Well, I haven't found too much, but we did just find a big group of amethysts. Oh my gosh, we just got 16 from one group. That's really good luck. So let's go ahead and craft our first hook. Not the best hook, but I'll take anything at this point. That's going to help us so much with our mobility. This is one of the best things for staying alive in caves. Because when you get enemies, you can actually get away from them. You can ignore knockback. So many good benefits. And we can do this kind of torch trick. Put some torches under the water like that. See what's under here. Perfect. Oh, and I see a wooden beam over there. That means we're really close to a house. Excellent. And we have a life crystal. And we can use this beam to kind of be a ladder here. Ooh, another life crystal. And we have a new item, Bismite Crystal. What? There's so many cool new things. We have a Bismite Pike, a Cutter, all sorts of cool stuff. Man, this is awesome. We even have a Toxin Potion. Critical Strikes may poison hit foes. Oh, this is a really good shield. It basically gives us the ability to poison enemies when we get hit. Man, so many cool things we need to start working towards crafting. This early game progression is actually feeling really nice. There's a lot of things that we can try crafting even before fighting a boss. Uh-oh, we are in a bad position here. We've got a digger. We've got a piranha. Okay, we survived. Thank goodness we've got a good sword right now. Well, I've been playing for a while, and I think this is probably a pretty good place to end this episode. We've got a full armor set, the stone armor, really nice. We've got a shackle, we've got a new sword, and we've got a decent pickaxe. Ooh, we have a bat over there. We gotta go kill that bat because it drops good ore. Sweet, more bismite. So it looks like we probably need like 30, 40 to craft that armor set and that shield. So I'll be farming that up a little bit. I think what I'll do is in between episodes, maybe do a little bit of building. And I'm thinking of doing that house that we've got up here. It's already pretty sweet. And I could kind of expand on it a little bit, maybe make a basement, maybe craft something off of here. And eventually maybe we can have a nice little village or something right here. Not sure, kind of just play around with it. But definitely need to get a bed and get a few more of these materials because we've got lots of stuff we can start crafting and new bosses to fight. In fact, let's take a look real quickly at our boss log. So I definitely want to figure out how to fight that Glade Wraith. And then we've got all sorts of different new bosses. And like I said earlier, I'm new to this mod and I haven't really done much research on it because I wanted to kind of come in here and just see what happens and figure it out as I go. So definitely let me know if you've got any suggestions and I'll try to incorporate that into the next episodes. And also, let me know if you think I should go with melee and ranged, or melee and magic, or just stick with a straight melee character. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying the start of this new series. I am super excited to see where Seth goes and his adventures, and excited to try out a new mod. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes in this series. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.